Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming to Saturday Night Show. I want to get this rolling with a, you know, a, one of our uh, brightest performers that uh, won a competition called So You Think You're Funny. And it's nice to have him back. And he told me he was so looking forward to coming back. Please give him a nice warm welcome. This is Kevin Sane, everybody. <laughs>
I'm not saying it was a career, but it was a job. <laughs> it was a reason to put on pants and go out and talk to people, right? Try to live a normal life. And then the governments, uh, you know, the, the COVID happened and they're like, every, you know, it's all shut down, everything's closed and they're like, there's nothing, nothing's open, this place is shut down. So I have no job, I have nowhere to be. And then the government is telling people to stay home unless they have to leave. Like it's, they're like, don't leave if you have to, just stay home. And they're giving people money, which is crazy because they that money that they're giving people is probably the, the money that I, you know, we're all using you probably to smoke weed with. So it's we come full circle because the government is now paying me not to get high and stay home uh, and not interact with people, which is a great, because they were against it before. They were weed was illegal, and now the government is paying me to stay home and smoke weed, which is a wonderful place to be in. You know, I've never been encouraged. I've never been so motivated by the government to get high on drugs. It's, <laughs> it's wonderful. Because what are you going to do at home, right? You're bored. You don't have anywhere to go. And I, I mean, I don't have like uh, I don't have kids or, or, or any kids for that matter. There should be no children around me ever, but. If you have no kids ever to deal with, you might do drugs because it's fun. I mean, who says, uh, who says drugs are, are not fun, right? I mean, everybody here, has, I'm sure you guys have done a little something, right? Has anybody here never done drugs? Right, see? <laughs> you cannot not do drugs. They're the best. Then it was great when I was here because I didn't even have to, I would just go to the kitchen staff and be like, do you have drugs? And they'd be like, yeah, of course, we're the kitchen staff. Uh, <laughs> are you idiots? This is our whole point. Uh, but it's good, I'm glad, I'm glad we're here. Um, you learn a lot about yourself when you're stuck at home. Uh, nothing to do, right? You find out about yourself. Uh, uh, like I was thinking about this the other day, like, you know, if you, uh, if you tell somebody you own an RV, people are like, wow, that guy must have a lot of money. If they find out that that's all you own, and people are like, that guy's really poor. That guy is almost homeless, I think. He has zero dollars most of his life. He just, not, he just lives in that thing. But, uh, I don't know, I, I always think it'd be cool to like just travel and like go around and just live in something like that. Uh, just to see, because I don't really get out much. I haven't really seen the country. Is anybody here like from out, out of Edmonton? Like, uh, yeah? Yellow Knight and Winnipeg. Wow. That's uh that must so so is this like for you to come here from work? Yeah. yeah. And you still had to work. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't know if you've ever heard of I oh you did so you maybe you didn't have work all Yeah. Oh okay. Um it's like you know, so people come here for jobs man, and uh the guy always like to come to get to meet people from out of town. Yellow Knight, Waterfall Bay. Is anybody here from out of Canada? Yeah? You're you're not from around Canada. Where are you from? Romania. Wow, that's I know nothing about Romania. Okay. It's past Montreal. That's hilarious. It's past Montreal. That should be your slogan in Romania. It's just past Montreal. But, uh, no, that's exciting. I mean, I, what is, uh, have you been here for a long time? Or maybe it's 19 years. That's cool. What, what made you want to come to Canada? Was it just the, the jobs? No jobs in Romania? No. Wow. It was a revolution. So you saw a revolution. So, he was almost shot? Holy shit, man, this is crazy. <laughs> Just a random guy at the comedy factory who almost died. You wouldn't be here right now if that, if you didn't, uh, if that guy missed. You wouldn't be here. <laughs> Did he miss? Yeah, I, I know, but like you didn't. Which is crazy, I mean, look, I, I live in Canada my whole life. I've never seen a revolution, right? I mean, how many people lived to see like uh, an uprising? Well, it was uh, the government was just corrupt. 
So this must be like fantastic for you because I mean you're obviously not getting shot. Oh, you were seventeen. Oh my goodness! Wow, it's scary though. I mean, it's not. Uh, it's, I mean, I'm, 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 I don't mean to like make fun of uh, This is uh, this is a sad topic. <laughs> this is bringing back bad memories. No, no, you don't care. You're 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 thrilled. Oh, you were, oh. Is it like, so like, oh, it was worse. It was worse than, oh, what's going on at home? Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't know what it's like to be in a revolution. I've, uh, you know, I've never met, like, like uh, I've been doing comedy for a few years. People come from all over the world, uh, Romania, some people I've met from Germany, Australia. You know one place I've never met a person from? North Korea. <laughs> You've ne- I, no, I have never met a North Korean, and I want to meet one, but I don't think they let them leave. That's one person none of us will ever get to talk to is a North Korean, because that would be like my dream was to be asked that question, to be like, what's it like living in North Korea? You know what I mean? But uh, sadly, I don't think I'll ever get the chance. I don't think I'll, uh, I'll ever get that. I did during the pandemic. I did watch uh, a lot of Korean baseball. Did anybody? Because they, they got, uh, not the North Korean, the South Korean, they actually uh, they got a little bit ahead of the game. And uh, so they were able to open things back up again. So they opened uh, their uh, baseball league. So I was at home watching Korean baseball. Did anybody watch any Korean baseball? No, obviously not. Oh, this is a stupid thing to get into. But, uh, so I was watching Korean baseball. And uh, what they did was, uh, they, uh, they had fake fans. They had cardboard cutouts of people. <laughs> yeah, in the stand. They didn't let real people in. They just put like fake looking people in the stands with like, you know, you know, just dead expressions. No, like no happiness, just you know what I mean? And I was thinking, I'm like, wow, look at this. I'm jealous of the Koreans and their freedom. Because uh, <laughs> they can actually play baseball and I can't, like we can't do that here. But I imagine, though, if you are playing baseball in North Korea, uh, that's probably what it actually looks like there with the fans, because they have no expressions at all. They're just, you know, completely. You don't, they don't play baseball. Oh, okay. Wow, you really killed my vibe. <laughs> the Romanian guy's like, I'm not having this. This statistically incorrect comedian come up here. When I just came from a revolution in 89, he's not. Uh, that's great though. I uh, Do they play baseball in Romania? No. no. What do you guys play? Soccer. soccer, right. Yeah, that's a stupid question. Of course you play soccer. Um, you guys play any other sports? Wait, what's your. Did you play any sports? You look like a guy who plays sports. What did you play? Volleyball. That is a fun sport. I never played. Has anybody else played? No? You played volleyball? Shitty at it. Shitty at it? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, were you good at it or were you shitty at it? Average? Yeah. I uh, I actually did join a gym recently. I don't know. Uh, actually, that's a stupid question. That's a stupid thing. I joined a gym, period, and I never went, um, which is pretty common. A lot of people get gym memberships. But I made a mistake. I went to a gym that was really, really nice. It was nicer than me. Uh, to me, like I was not in good enough shape to be at the gym. Everybody's already in fantastic shape at this gym. It's a very expensive gym. You you need to be at like a basic level of fitness. I was like this and I have no, I'm not fit. So, and I paid way too much money for it. Uh, I realized if you're the worst shaped guy in the gym, uh, you automatically are there to motivate everybody else not to look like you. <laughs> That's your job just by default. You just, go up to people and you just scare them with your posture. And, uh, <laughs> this guy is crooked. <laughs> I can't look like that. I better do 10 more squats right now. <laughs> and the gym that I went to had squash courts. Do you ever play squash? 
Okay, so squash. Uh, you all are familiar with that. So this guy was absolutely incredible. He was playing squash. I'd never seen this before. A squash court. Glass. I could watch him. He was moving so fast I could barely keep up with him. But the only thing I could really think about when I watched him was, man, look at this guy. Look at him move. He could just make one friend. He could play tennis. <laughs> he could play tennis. You know what I mean? We're trying not to get killed in a revolution. One or the other. Same skills. Same skills. The squash, you know, side to side. Um, I'm going to get out of here, though. And, uh, on one final note, you guys got a great lineup of comedians coming up here. Um, I, uh, uh, I was recently, uh, I was doing a show in, uh, not, not in a comedy place, but just in like, uh, it was, it was for a, a student's, uh, like a, a student organization, and, uh, they were there to, uh, promote, like, uh, good mental health and all that stuff. And the guy, and I'm, actually, the show was, uh, more for students. So what they did was they, uh, brought in a motivational speaker first. Uh, which I realized uh, while I was watching him, it's like it's the same. Like if this doesn't pan out, which it probably won't, but if uh, if this doesn't go out, I'll just become a motivational speaker. Okay, because uh, what do you need? You just need to stand there and seem like you know what the hell you're talking about. That's that's motivational, right? Just tell people things you wish somebody told you when you were a kid, right? So, uh, but it's weird doing stand-up comedy after somebody just gave a motivational speech because it's like, here's the motivation. You can go out, do whatever you want. Oh, and, and, and here comes the next guy with, you know, dick, the dick jokes afterwards. <laughs> and I don't know how to follow a motivational speech because it's a great speech, but it's, I, I don't have anything motivational to say. You know what I mean? So uh, I just basically told him a story about, like, uh, the time I went on a Tinder date. Has anybody here been on the Tinder? Uh, you guys, yeah, Tinder, yeah. men on Tinder. Oh, you guys are gonna love this. Told them the Tinder story. I'm gonna tell it to you right now. I met this girl on Tinder. I was so excited. She was not, but I still pushed for it. We went to a place like this to go eat, public place, nice restaurant. Uh, but she came straight from work, and me being a comedian had nowhere to be. So I was refreshed, ready to go. And uh, when we got together, uh, she said, "Listen, I'm really sorry. I just..." really tired, I, I've been working all day, I said, no problem. Comedian, I can take care of this. And uh, midway through the conversation, uh, while I was talking, uh, she fell asleep. She just, <laughs> she just decided it wasn't worth being awake anymore. <laughs> it was, it was, whatever she was trying to dream of was more appealing. And uh, so she was trying to get out of this situation, which, listen, uh, it, it, might, it, it is hilarious. That's why I'm telling it to you. But it's also sad because, uh, to other people in the in the restaurant, what they would have seen is this guy and this girl sitting down at a table, order some drinks, and then after a couple of couple of drinks, the girl starts getting a little nodded off and then starts falling asleep. And I'm still refreshed and smiling, which is not a good look for a guy these days. You don't want to be the guy. You don't want to be the guy on the date with the girl whose head just hit the table and knocked out cold. You know, sipping cocktails. That's not a good look. But I knew one thing, I knew one thing for sure. Uh, I'm probably guilty. They're not gonna believe that uh, I'm a boring person. That's not, uh, nobody believes uh, that side of the story. So uh, anyway, I just did the only thing I, I think I probably would encourage anyone. If you're ever in a situation you know you're going to jail, uh, I just uh, grabbed my stuff and I just got the hell out of there. That's, that's what I did. But she was cool, I, I appreciate it. She picked up the check. <laughs> you guys have been great. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Glad to see you, everybody. Nice return. Glad to see you.